My name is Lynn Enquist. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Annual Reviews of Virology, and uh, the, this is Dan DeMaio and, and Terry Dermody, uh, both Associate Editors for the Annual Reviews of Virology. Uh, we're, we're very happy to be here to tell you about the first volume of the Annual Reviews of Virology. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to ask, you know, why a new Annual Reviews? There's a lot of reviews and things that are out there. But our goal here really came from sort of long-term efforts that both Dan and I uh, were involved in with the annual reviews of microbiology, which uh, uh, we were represented uh, virology, and we were always coming up with a lot of good ideas. Uh, and uh, people kept saying, you know, you could, virologists have all of these different things that are going on. And so it was really clear to us that virology was an exciting sort of adventure that we were going to do. And then we discovered that uh, there are 34 or so annual reviews in the annual review stable, and that virology papers are published probably in more than half of them. And so we realized it would be a good time to consolidate all of this, all of these material. And I told you both uh, that this was my idea, that the time had come to do this, and you both thankfully agreed to help me put this all together. And so uh, I don't know what what to say was the most motivating thing about this. What for me was really that uh, what we wanted to do was, was to uh, take the good things that the annual reviews bring to the table, uh, excellent uh, 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 editing, uh, excellent uh, uh, artists, excellent uh, uh, cinematography, to try to bring virology to life. And uh, uh, I can tell you that my goal in bringing everything together here was really to try to show young virologists what the field is like. It's a very exciting field, and we wanted to bring that together. But we also wanted to take advantage of the fact that uh, this is an opportunity for us to put autobiographical articles in written by the leaders of the field, also to bring historical papers uh, uh, discussions in about how we know what we know, and maybe an opportunity to really do some prospective, looking forward about where the field is, uh, uh, of virology is going. Uh, I don't know what uh, you guys were thinking of when you signed on to do this business, but uh, uh, what, did you, what did you think of my original idea? I would say, Lynn, I agree with you. I don't think there's ever been a more exciting time to be a virologist. Um, the problems have never been more compelling, and the tools we have to answer the questions about uh, how viruses replicate in cells and and replicate in host organisms and disseminate amongst populations have, have never been greater. And, and particularly exciting is we're beginning to appreciate that viruses exist in a much, much larger community than just simply viruses in their host organisms, but, but in a community that includes lots of other microorganisms and, and of course, the other host organisms that they infect, um, sometimes invertebrates, invertebrates, plants, mammals. It's really an exciting time. Um, Another aspect for me that I was really excited is the opportunity to work with you all. We had, of course, worked together previously in the Journal of Virology and, and the chance to lead a new journal forward where we could really set what the history would be. This was brand new and um, put together a team of an editorial board and think hard about what we wanted this journal to look like, um, selecting the first authors and guiding the first chapters to completion has been really fulfilling, just yeah. the chance to yeah. work together. So Dan, what did, yeah. what did you think about the way that we put our editorial board together? Well, I think unlike a, a, a conventional journal where we see what comes in the door, <coughs> where people submit articles and we judge them, we sort of get to pre-select what we think is interesting. We get to pick the topics that we think are the most interesting, the most exciting, <coughs> the most timely, and we can't do that by ourselves. We need the help of other experts in the field. So we gathered together a group of about 10 or so uh, distinguished virologists get together once a year, and we just basically brainstorm for an afternoon um, about what are the topics we'd like to cover that would be bright to be published in a year or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the sort of the side benefits of, of being on the editorial mm -hmm. review, uh, uh, annual reviews of uh, virology editorial board is, is that we get to talk good science for a day, uh, a real good interaction with people uh, that are uh, movers and shakers in the business. We have a broad representation of, of expertise from structural biologists, animal virologists, bacterial virus people, uh, plant uh, uh, virologists, and it, it shows the, the breadth of, of our business. But 
like Terry said, the field is changing so rapidly because of new technology. Essentially, our ability now to really assess all of the viruses that are in a particular environment and uh, the, our understanding of that is in its infancy. Mm -hmm. And this is a real exciting time to be around. I mean, every meeting I go to now, the idea that there is yet a, a new virus, not just a new virus, but a new virus community. And this community actually is engaging not only the host cells, but also the microbiome of bacteria and everything that's around. It is a highly integrated uh, a business that we're in. In fact, I always tell my students that virology is one of the most integrated fields there are. You have to know a little bit about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what I like about this, uh, the annual reviews concept, is that we can bring all of that together, essentially with our direction of how to put that all together. It is not just you know a collection of papers. So, uh, and, and now that we've done this a couple of times, uh, choosing authors for volume one and choosing authors for volume two, we, we have a bit of a folkway that we're following. And, and you might think that it would take 10 um, people interested in virology a good hour or so to decide what the topics are and, and what should be covered in those topics. It takes us um, at least a half a day, yeah. if not longer, and sometimes still we don't reach consensus. There's so much exciting virology to be featured. But hearing those discussions, I come away learning an awful lot from my colleagues that I didn't know about topics I should know a lot more about. And, and, and then we have the opportunity to choose pieces that we think are going to be of broad interest to our community, and, and not just um, those who are leading research teams focused on viruses like, like we do, but but students, young ones, who are just coming into our field for the first time, and maybe their very first introduction to a very important topic is a review that they'll read in the annual review of virology. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not just that day. There's a lot of prep time yes. beforehand where we, where each of us think about good topics. And right. You don't want to come to the meeting with a lousy set of topics. No. Right? We, we, uh, you, will not be thought, you will not be thought well of. No. <laughs> and no one waste people's time and, and have to defend your, your choices. And there's usually good consensus, but yeah. there's vigorous debate. Yeah. And we also get people who will submit suggestions um, unsolicited, and some of them we also decide are, are important mm -hmm. topics. It's, it's, it's a very good process, and yeah. I, think, uh, I, I think the outcome will, will demonstrate that. I think one of the things that, that impresses me is that how, what, when there is a topic that hits everybody, they say, mm -hmm. yes, this mm -hmm. is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. It usually comes because we've been at different meetings, we've heard these people talk, mm -hmm. we know the energy that they have, we know how how excited we are about the particular topic, and, and that happens more often than more often than not. I think, as I was saying before, some of the tools that annual reviews uh, brings to the uh, the table are, for example, that we can uh, do more with our artwork. We can make the, uh, the the figures look good, not only look good but also be animated. That can be uh, uh, indexed in ways that we can do things. I've been told by our production uh, uh, person, Jocelyn Rice, that uh, this first volume of the annual reviews of virology is the most accessorized volume that, uh, <laughs> that they've ever done. I'm looking forward to, uh, it, to seeing how that it, goes. And coming together. from three people who are excited about cars, I mean, <laughs> who's surprised about that? <laughs> yeah, well, the, uh, I think some of the other things that uh, we really want to do is we want to make these articles accessible to students as well as to people. We want to see this used in teaching, uh, and accordingly, the figures are prepared so that they can be uh, downloaded as PowerPoint slides uh, for presentations. But we also read uh, the, the articles very carefully to make sure that we have consistent uh, you know, use of, uh, of uh, terms and understanding, uh, trying to rid ourselves of jargon and things like that just one of my pet peeves, but yes, anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in addition to selecting topics, we're also selecting the authors. And it's, uh, it's an important consideration is someone who can write clearly and compellingly mm -hmm. and can prepare figures that are clear and understandable. It's, it's, not just, it's not just the content, but also the presentation is something that we yeah. very important. And I think, you know, part of that comes from the editorial board members themselves. Uh, someone will take charge of soliciting a review and they will get the review, but then the review is written and it comes back and it's reviewed by another member right. of the editorial board. So we try to, you know, try to keep some kind of consistency in, in, in what's going in a, on. In a couple of um, reviews I handled for the first volume, I, I looked at early drafts, in fact I looked at outlines and then early drafts and then final drafts, so I had a real sense that I was helping as an editor, which for some other 
editorial responsibilities yes, yes. that I have, I don't really have the opportunity to edit too much. Yeah. So, well, the authors really also uh, benefit from the artistic staff because we can, the authors can deliver a fairly rough draft on mm -hmm. a napkin, yeah. mm -hmm. a sketch, mm -hmm. and then the professional artist at annual reviews will turn it into a quality figure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that is, is not typical for a journal. Mm -hmm. One goal we have with annual reviews um, is to move toward some type of video content that will accompany each piece that we publish. Now, we haven't managed to do that for the first volume, but, but we think that will probably take some traction yeah. in, in order for us to achieve that. And our idea is that um, the video segments will provide the authors an opportunity to talk a bit about their careers and what excites them in virology. It may also offer them a chance to describe a, a technique that might be particularly important to their work that others might not be so familiar with. And, and, and maybe there might be some controversy, and, and an author might want to just, just weigh in on a controversial yeah. subject and describe his or her point of view and, and, and let that be a formal introduction to the review. So that's our goal, to try and have some, some video for, for each of those pieces. Yeah. That part, it, part of that is the fact that there are an ever-expanding number of new journals and new review journals and whatever, we want to make the annual reviews of virology a very special place. Uh, we want to be innovative, we want to be creative, we don't want to be locked into a uh, sort of a format uh, that uh, is essentially old and state. We want to be uh, as communicative as possible. We, have, we want to engage more young people in, in, in virology, uh, we want to educate the old dudes and dudettes mm -hmm. to, uh, to the new things that are going on. Mm -hmm. I really am looking forward to, to seeing what we can do with all of this. Well, I think we also have a great history in annual reviews. Like when I was a student, I remember those blue vines yes. in review about chemistry, and that was sort of the Bible. Yeah. And the technology has changed, but we want to be publishing the gold standard reviews. Yeah. But if someone wants to learn about a topic, we should be the in virology. We should be the place they go first. Yeah. I, we, it's a cliche, but we want to set the bar really very high. Mm -hmm. We want these to be the best reviews that we can have. There are plenty of reviews out there, but we want people to come to read these reviews because they're going to be in depth, they're going to be accessible, they're going to have new ideas, and new ways of thinking about things. And stuff. Another, another reason that we felt was important to do this was, as Lynn mentioned, there are many interview volumes that have virology articles, but they were spread out among many volumes, they were dilute by other material that they were hard to find. And I think by putting them into one place, readers can go to one place to find what's really exciting and new in the field and not have to go looking in many different places where, where things go. Yeah, well, I think this is all part of a big problem we have, which is information overload. Right. There's way too much information. Right. And trying to decide what you're going to spend your valuable time on. And so we, we want to make that a very easy choice. Right. And we want to say that this is the place where you want to go to first to see the best virology that's In, in fact, one, one of the features of our reviews that I think will be particularly attractive for both young and more senior virologists is that we're asking the authors to annotate the references and let us know which, which papers are particularly important and why. So if someone is becoming familiar with the field and wants to understand what the classics and what the great new papers really, really are, but that information will be provided in our reviews. Yep. yep. Easy to find. Another idea is, is we want to have reviews that are not really reviews of what's been done before, but sort of projections on what's coming. Mm -hmm. And where people talk about where they think the trends are looking mm -hmm. forward. And I think that should be a lot of fun to write and a lot of fun to read. Yeah. Yeah. So. We, uh, the content is really under construction at the moment. Our first volume is put together. It is, uh, uh, we're very excited about that. The second volume is, is assembled. Uh, we're uh, going to be doing that. And the third volume we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, in a month October. or so. Yes, October. in October. Yes. Yes. And I don't know about you guys, but when I go to meetings, uh, I have a little separate little thing that I say, ARB worthy, <laughs> that We've got to mm -hmm. talk to this person. We've got to right. think about what's going on. When I hear somebody that has is, is a gifted speaker, but also has a way of announcing what they're doing that makes it understandable to me, mm -hmm. uh, is somebody that I really want to talk to and see what's going on. Yeah, so it's it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an exciting adventure. Mm -hmm. And uh, of all the things I've been involved in, this is one where we're going to be on the ground floor. We're going to get it all set up and running, and I'm looking forward to that. Good point. You should make is, is 
really how important virology is today. It's, been, it's always been important, but if you look at emerging infections that um, every few months something new crops up that, that threatens human health. And some of these agents are new, uh, some of them are old agents that are coming back for a, for a rerun. And uh, it's been very important that we are able to develop methods to attack these agents and to disseminate the information about them. Yeah. And I think it's also important that we don't compartmentalize virology essentially those that affect just human health. Mm -hmm. Viruses don't really know boundaries, they don't know, uh, you know uh, gender, they don't know, they don't make choices like that. Their choices are to find the best place to replicate where they can make, you know, uh, uh, most number of progeny that they can do. So we have diseases in plants that affect our, 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 our food supply. We have uh, uh, diseases uh, of, of uh, our animals that uh, uh, have big impacts in everything that we do. Most of the new emerging human diseases that are showing up are actually coming from animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we need to bring all of that together. And so that's one of the things we want to do is, like I said, this one-stop shopping. If you want to learn about the hottest things that are going on in virology right at the moment, this is the place to go. Well, then you think about um, the effect of viruses on biomass carbon footprint, climate change, um, there are maybe more viruses than truly anything else that would replicate. Well, I mean, the number you weigh them, you know, so. Well, certainly true of the genetic diversity. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a universe of viruses out there that we don't even recognize. Right. Which is frightening, but also exciting. Well, our, ignor biology. our ignorance is really stunning, and it, and it was because we didn't know how to essentially assess uh, the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But now with sequencing technology, deep sequencing technology, we can essentially find and report all of the genetic, the nucleotide genetic information that's out there. And with the other kinds of technology of mass spectrometry and single molecule imaging and all of the things, you can begin to assemble a, a, a library of knowledge that's unsurpassed. We've never had this before. Right. So the point I was going to make before, Lynn, all of these technological advances is advances that have allowed us to do cell biology in unprecedented detail yeah. and now being led forth by viruses, just as viruses led an understanding of molecular biology yeah. and the central yeah. dogma and how we yeah. control transcription and translation. And so now we're using viruses to understand how organelles form and, and how they're rearranged to make bioreplication centers. And of course, this is all about repurposing of cellular proteins and endowing them with new functions that the viruses are doing. And, and again, viruses are leading the way to contributing new understandings to how cells work. Very fundamental, impossible to, impossible to predict what the, what the benefits to human health, other than just a deeper knowledge of how our cells and tissues work. And from that, certainly, new um, uh, therapies That's one, of, one of the things that I think is getting lost in this day and age, of the idea that everything sort of has to be promoted, the translational medicine. We have to move things in so that we can go from the bench you know, to the bedside, and, and we have to be able to, to do this. This is true, this is really important. We need to do this. But I always say that if we're not careful, pretty soon we're not gonna have anything to translate. Exactly. So exactly. We're, we want to really highlight the latest fundamental research as well as the latest research that is pointing us in the direction of new therapeutics and, and new uh, ways to intervene with viruses. So it's one of the reasons why it's so exciting. There's so many things that are going on and they're Information is being scattered all every place. I really want to see if we can capture uh, uh, this in, in one spot, and so we're gonna. Well, I'm gonna give it my best shot, and I hope you guys are gonna be there too. <laughs>